Today I am going to click this mouse button 13,338 times and I will type 27,702 keystrokes to create 1,026 unique coupons for our 1,026 unique coupons. I'm the CEO of this company. There's a lot of other things that I could be doing. One might argue that the tasks I'm doing today, creating these 1,026 coupons are menial work that anyone could do. My argument is that the fact that I'm willing to click this mouse 13,338 times today is why I'm CEO of this company. And the reason I'm telling you all this is that if you wanna be successful as an artist, you have to have about as much get up and go as it takes to do all of these menial boring things. You picked a career field that seems exciting, but the amount of work that it will require for you to succeed is gargantuan. Let's get into it. Bitch. Last week I was listening to a podcast by the startup accelerator Y Combinator and the two podcast hosts were talking about how there's an oversupply of founders who are willing to create a company around recommending concerts or recommending movies, right? If your job is going to be hanging out at cool concerts with musicians and being part of that scene, there's lots of people out there who want to do that too. When it comes to being an artist, we have this problem, the oversupply problem. The world is in no short supply of people willing to endeavor being a super cool rock star. Which is why in order to stand out in that set of those willing to do that job, you actually have to perform exceptionally high. Yo, yo! <laughs> probably have to have better performance than you would otherwise need in a boring industry like figuring out how to better optimize the billing and receiving for flooring companies. There are very few founders who are willing to work on that problem and the fewer founders there are willing to work at that problem, the less competition there is, the easier it is to excel. So by choosing what seemed like a cool, comfy career path, be an artist, man, be a musician, you set yourself up for the most competitive environment you could possibly find yourself in. And to stand out in that environment, you have to be willing to do things that almost every other person on earth is not willing to do in pursuit of that goal. As you may know from watching this channel, we have one of the largest music marketing academies online. We teach music business, music marketing, and just fundamental business stuff. And we have 1,026 members for our music marketing academy. What if we gave all of our indie pro members the ability to give a gift to their fellow musicians? That would be a cool value add for our indie pro members. Give them a one-time use coupon they can give as a Christmas gift to the musician in their life. So with that top level, idea we want to break it down into what it will take to do so and our technological constraints place a limit on how we can execute that so in order to give every member a coupon that is unique to them that they can give someone else and it will disable after one use we have to actually take all of our members find a unique identifier in their email contact profile we then have to take that number and we have to make a coupon where the code is that number and we have to make a new one for every member that we have and there's no automatic way to do it. This is a task that in our common industry parlance sucks ass. It sucks ass to have to take 1026 data entries, type in their name, paste in this unique identifier from some export that we got from our email list. Click over to limit it to a one-time use, then click over to apply it to our Indie Pro product, and then click and save, and then check their name off and go to the next one. Okay, I had to make some kind of a dent by now. Oh, come on! For each of these 1,026 entries, there are 13 mouse clicks and 27 keystrokes that have to be typed. I've reduced it down to that amount. Right now I'm on 124, meaning I'll need about nine or 10 times the amount of work I've already done to get through this list entirely. How long will that take? Well, it took me about two hours to get here, but in that time I also had to export all of our members, find this unique identifier, create a spreadsheet, and then split it out. So I would say that it will probably take me about eight hours total, maybe seven. This is work that's not glamorous. It kinda sucks. We don't know how valuable this will be to our indie pro members. We don't know how many of the people they give this to as a Christmas gift will end up 
using it in any meaningful way. So we don't really know the overall impact of, of doing this. But the thing that sets me apart as, as a professional is that I'm willing to do it. It totally sucks. It's not fun. It's not glamorous and I'm willing to do it. In fact, a broad majority of the things that I do on a given day are like this. They're not glamorous, they kinda suck, and by nature of their reducibility, they just can't be done any easier way. A person who is not activated is gonna look at that set of tasks and be like, oh, no. Dude, I'm not doing all that. A person who is activated will look at that, try to reduce it down to the minimum steps required, and then just go do it, knowing that if they get started sooner, it'll be over sooner. Now, being an artist, being a musician, has tons of really fun, groovy things you can do, right? It's totally fun for me to call over my collaborators and spend an entire afternoon just being creative, and then like performing what I wrote into a microphone, and the, the process of recording, even mixing, can be a little bit fun. But that's because it's very novel. And the more novel it is, the, the more novel it feels. And so it feels like you're getting all this novelty, this new experience. But if you have to do it day in and day out forever, it's going to become drudgery. I used to be the manager of a recording studio, and as much as I loved the creative process, it became boring and unexciting and tedious. Scheduling another recording session, stepping in and overviewing it, all, all that stuff just became really monotonous. And once that's gone, what you're left with is a set of tasks that just kinda suck. Okay, let's see my to-do list. Gotta work, gotta work, gotta work, gotta work, gotta work. Kinda sucks to write yet one more script and then cut yet one more video like this one. And then pull it into Premiere Pro yet again and cut out all the little steps where I stopped. Like the one that I just cut out send it off to an editor, get it back, review it, send the revisions, and then get the final copy, and then take the social clips and put them onto Instagram. All this shit eventually sucks. At first, it's fun, but it, it eventually sucks. So your ability to do things that suck has a direct relationship with how successful you can be. Now, that's true starting out for almost any field. Eventually, you get to a point where there's a limitation on how valuable your time is against how valuable the task you're doing is and you have to equalize them so you know if it were trivial for me to hand this task off to a a lower paid you know form of labor and then have them do it that would be great but the time it would take for me to source that talent hand it off sop it teach them how to do it i could just be done with it by then and so that's why i'm doing it right now the overall point being is that if you're an artist you chose a path that does, it does not make you unique that you chose this path. Everyone wants to just hang out and doodle pictures, okay? Everyone wants to just sing songs. That's not unique. Your skill level at it is also not unique. There's, there's hundreds of thousands of artists out there and a great deal of them are very talented. In fact, it makes you very commonplace that you chose something that is so desirable as a career path. You're a basic bench. If you could be creative for a living, that's incredibly desirable because most people hate their jobs. And as a result, everyone would love to do that. There is no shortage of supply of people who are willing to have fun for a living. And so if you actually want to succeed at it, you have to prove that you didn't choose it because you're common, that you understand the challenges inherent to it, and that you're willing to work harder for an unreasonable amount of time without any results in order to make it a reality. Almost everything great in life requires that you work at it for an unreasonable amount of time without any expectation of result. A key example being like, let's say you wanna be a YouTuber. You have to make YouTube videos consistently for a very long time in order to have any chance of success. Mr. Beast was on YouTube for five years trying many, many different things before he actually became probably the, the first YouTube billionaire is what he will end up being. And that's because he was willing to work four or five years without any result, just keep continuing to work at it, continuing to get better until he found something that represented a sea change. And almost anything is like this because even exponential returns appear linear at first. And you're a human being, you expect linearity, you expect one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one. Plus one. Now, if instead your operator is times two, well, from one to two, it's the same as plus one. 
So for that first year, you don't experience anything different with an exponential. It seems linear. And then you go from two to four, and that's twice as fast as what you would have gotten if it was just plus one, but it still feels pretty linear. Only when you start exploding from 16 to 32 to 64 to 128, at the knee of the exponential curve, when it explodes upwards, only then do you truly start to feel like things are not linear. And so Mr. Beast was on what ended up being an exponential pathway, but it probably felt very linear for those first five years. And as an artist, you have to be willing to suffer through that seeming linearity. And so I figured since I'm doing this task today, it was a perfect opportunity to talk about why becoming an artist is not a very unique life path and what it will take in order to turn that into a reality. To be a successful, self-sustaining artist, you're gonna need to be willing to do things that not only the other people in your field are not willing to do, but almost everybody is not willing to do. So your set of people who could wanna do it more than you, who could be more willing than you, is much larger than if you were like optimizing delivery routes for, for rice. The more specific and boring the career path and the solution that you're trying to bring to the world is, the easier time you're gonna have because it's so boring and uncommon, but yet so needed that there's very few people who are willing to lead the charge to finding a solution to that problem. When you pick something that's incredibly glamorous and exciting as your career path, you now have competition with the entire world because everyone wants to do that thing. And so you have to be that much more magnanimous, that much more prolific and productive than everyone else in order to succeed at it. Because otherwise you're gonna be forced out by some form of competition, someone who's more competent, more willing to, you know, get through the suck, get through the things that really are not fun and do the things that are not fun, more importantly. And you look at the superstars of today and, and you think, oh, they're uh, they're lucky or they're good looking or, or something like that, where, oh, they, they just sort of lucked into this, this opportunity. And some of it's luck, but a lot of it is also they were willing to do things things that you're not willing to do. Like Justin Bieber did things you're not willing to do when he was younger. He suffered through a lot of suck in order to get to where he is. It might seem like he's this vacuous pretty boy who just like, oh, he was good looking so it worked out. It's like, no, he made like YouTube videos, like a, ton, a lot of YouTube videos that got no response for a long time. He went to hundreds of meetings with his family and then the real work began. He had to learn all of the stagecraft and dancing and songwriting and song performing that eventually became his overwhelming success. He was willing to do things that if you really look at yourself in the mirror, you're not willing to do. So the point of today's video is to understand the game you're in. You are in a game that everyone wants to be in. And in order to poke your head out above the noise, you're gonna have to do things no one else is willing to do. Making songs, putting them out, oh boy, it's fun. It really is, it's a blast. Music brings me happiness. Researching competitor content for two hours, cataloging all of it in a spreadsheet, breaking it down into its components, coming up with a plan to record 20, 30 different pieces of content that are based off of those components, recording them and getting them edited and then putting them out and testing them and going through the data to understand which one did best and then taking those winners and spinning off more content just to get your initial fan base, it sucks. It sucks to have to do that. And it is what's required. So you want job security? You wanna be successful in this path? You want to do this thing that at its face seems very fun for a job, for a living? Okay, how much suck? are you willing to endure? It sucks, sucks, sucks. So find all of the really boring and mind numbing and difficult things that are components of your trajectory forward in this career field and fetishize being the only one in everybody that you know who's willing to do those things. That does mean you're gonna have to learn technologies you don't currently understand, learn softwares and processes you don't currently understand, struggle through them, be bad at them, and then eventually get better at them, and then find a whole new set of things you don't understand that you need to master. You're gonna have to do the things that suck if you actually wanna be in this career path. I apologize if this is news to you, 
but I hope that this serves as inspiration for you. You know what you gotta do. It's all the things that suck. You don't have to be confused about that. The things you need to do to be successful are not the things that are super exciting and fun. It's just like learning an instrument, right? Practicing scales is not fun. It is certainly not as glamorous as uh, perfectly performing a piece you wrote. It's the muck, the drudgery of, of this super skill, this super set of skills that you want to achieve. You'll never get there unless you do all the muck and the drudgery and the 27,702 keystrokes. So anyways, I gotta get back to those keystrokes and those mouse clicks, but if this video was helpful, if you liked this video, like it, subscribe, see more videos, or if you're in a binge mode at the end here, there's gonna be a few recommended videos for you. You can click on one of those and enjoy it. We always appreciate you for watching, commenting, liking, sharing, all the cool things you do to help us out and to show your support. And I will see you in the next video. And peace out to you.